David sang the praise of glory, the glory of Jehovah. Paul preached that all is lost, save knowing Christ. Little John said he is precious by leaning on his bosom. So for a moment, may I humbly testify Did I mention that I love him, how I worship and adore him when I can see no way he makes a way. Did I mention he's been faithful to every promise he's ever made me? I love him. That's all I want to say. How many sermons can be preached about this Jesus? How many songs can be sung about God's Son? There are not enough words, enough notes in the music to tell the story of all the Savior has done. Did I mention that I love Him, how I worship and adore Him? When I can see no way, He makes a way. Did I mention He's been faithful to every promise He's ever made me? I love Him, that's all I want to say. Did I mention He's been faithful to every promise He's ever made me? I love Him, that's all I want to say. Let me agree with that song, He's been faithful. Amen. Amen. That's what we ought to be. Amen. Key word this year is faithfulness. Okay? 43rd year, let's be faithful. And I've tried to be faithful. My wife's tried to be faithful. Kids try to be faithful. Uh, we got to be faithful. We need to be faithful. It's only our reasonable service that would be faithful. We're in a series on the will of God, and I was amazed how long I preached this morning. I really was. I, I lost track. I just I was in the third heaven on the Lord's day. Amen. I was in the spirit, I hope. I hope I was. Amen. But I thought, my word, did I preach that long? And um, got caught up in it. And I hope that you didn't get tired of it. Uh, you, seemed, you seemed like you was listening, half of you. But it was good, amen, that you listened to that long a sermon. So I'll try to be brief tonight. I'm going to cut it down to 45 minutes, amen. <laughs> but uh, but uh, uh, turn your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 1. And uh, we're going to continue, uh, Brother Cody, on this uh, uh, point about guidance is practical. Uh, we find it through a relation. We find everything in the Bible we need to know about the will of God. It's not mysterious. I'm not looking for visions or signs or signals. The Bible says a wicked and perverse generation seeketh after a sign. Folks, I'm going to tell you the greatest sign is the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the greatest miracle, amen? By the way, the greatest miracle on this earth is salvation. Amen. Uh, all these people low rate, uh, you know, I'll never get us uh, sitting in Shoney's minding my own business. The old Shoney's up on Rocky Face. I remember when it was up there, little old place. One time we had a men's breakfast there, and we took over the whole place. And Rusty Lavender preached and ran everybody out of the out of the. I mean, they all started just evacuating like the fire alarm went off when he started preaching. I thought, praise God, I know how to get more room in this place anyway. And uh, you know, I, I really believe this with all my heart is that when this guy came up, he was a charismatic Baptist. I don't know what that is, but it was something odd. And uh, I went to his church, and he had different Sunday school classes, the gift of healing, the gift of tongues. You know, I thought, oh, my word. Barred his baptistry, and it started arcing on me. Uh, the, you know, they forgot to turn it off, and it was electric. It was just something. But he came to me, a real smart aleck, and said, hey, uh, we had uh, three people healed this morning in our church. And I, he said, what happened at your church? I thought, man, I'm just trying to eat my strawberry pie. I don't feel like talking. I don't want to do all this stuff. I don't want to debate the charismatic movement. I want tongues versus Bible. 
I just didn't want to say anything. He kept on. He said, hey, hey, we had three healed. How, what happened at your church? I mean, publicly. And so I finally said, David, I'm going to tell you what, what happened. I'm going to be as humble as I can be. We had two resurrected from the dead. He looked at me, he said, you did? I said, yeah, two people got born again, passed from death into life. I said, let me eat my strawberry pie, and I kept on eating the pie. Amen. Great day. Greatest miracle salvation. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1 through 7, and I want to preach something that will change your life. It's on how to fear God. The will of God is you to fear God. Amen. This world's full of fear. But I'll tell you what, your heart should be full of the fear of God. I'll explain it. Define it, and I'm going to give you about seven or eight verses to show you the results of the fear of God. My prayer for our kids and for our church is we be a God-fearing family and a God-fearing church. Amen. And I'll say this too. God help the United States of America to be a God-fearing nation again because we are not God-fearing. We're not God-fearing. Uh, matter of fact, we're a post-Christian era. We're an anti-Christ spirit going on. And I'm not going to go into everything. Y'all tired of it. Some people never come back to this church if they, if they think I'm on a political swing every time I get up. But I want to tell you something, friend. We're far from fearing God as a nation. And it grieves me, don't it, you? Let's look at verse 1. Y'all want to stand in reverence to the Word of God. Amen. Praise God. This is a good crowd. I didn't think we'd have half this many. We got more people in quarantine that's here. But uh, God bless you listening. On, I know every one of you is listening. There ain't one person watching bowling or something. Amen. They're, 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 watch, they're listening. Brother, Brother Cody, I hope you can handle the, the crowd that's coming in. Praise God. I have faith in the media ministry. It's Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. Oh, don't we need that? to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment and equity, and give subtility to the simple and the young man knowledge and discretion. Uh, and that, that'll help you. You learn how to make decisions. And a wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. It's plural. To understand a proverb and the interpretation the words of the wise and their dark sayings. And here's my text. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but the fool despises wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Say amen right there, mama. Y'all got some law at the house, amen. And it says, for they shall be an ornament of grace unto their, unto their head, and a chain of about thy neck. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Now, thank God we can read the rest of the chapter and go home blessed. But I want to preach just a few minutes on how to be a wise man or a wise woman for the Lord. Wisdom. Wisdom. You may be seated as I pray. Father, thank you for the good presentation. Lord, um, Brother Josh and Sister Megan and the kids come highly recommended by Brother Jeremy and Brother Kevin. That's good enough for me. Brother Mark. And Lord, I have a lot of confidence in these three families. And if they say he's a good missionary, I believe he's a good missionary. Lord, I've seen him in action. I've seen his willingness and his submission to do anything he can do to further the gospel in South Africa. Lord, I've seen their labor of love. And I thank you, God, that we have the privilege uh, to be part of their ministry. Lord, move upon the church, uh, Lord, to take these uh, this young family on and, God, the new church plant they're going to start. We just pray, God, you'd use them. Now, Lord, help us as a church to be a God-fearing church. God, help our families be God-fearing. God, help our nation to be God-fearing. God, give us wisdom. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. I'm preaching on how to know and live in the will of God. Never thought I'd preach this many sermons on it, but that's not up to me. I'm just a voice. He's the one that dictates what we preach around here. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. But folks, I want you to know that guidance is very practical from the Word of God. I 
talked about the providence of God, that evangelist coming in that church on that Sunday night after 13 kids were saved in that youth program, took me out of the business world and put me in the ministry many years ago, many hairs ago. I mean, 50 years ago. Good night. My wife is not that old. I married a young lady. But then, number three, the Spirit of God guides you. Aren't you glad for the leading of the Spirit? Amen? The Holy Ghost ought to check you if you're out of the will of God. And I'll tell you this, the Holy Ghost ought to disturb you. Let the peace of God rule umpire in your heart. The Word of God ought to uh, keep you in line. And then uh, the providence of God, doors opening, doors closing. But I think we left off after the Spirit of God, the people of God help you stay in the will of God. Now the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 27, in verse 17, that iron sharpeneth iron. You know what I think of God for is that you challenge me, and I believe, friend, you pray for me, and if need be, if I got off into uh, outer space of uh, selfishness and vainglory, I believe you would rebuke me. I don't think you'd put up with it. And folks, that's accountability. The church is a community of accountability, and we need it. Now, I want to tell you something. These people don't think they need the church of God. The reason is they're looking for an island they can send on. And folks, we need each other. And as Brother uh, uh, Alex taught this morning, uh, we need to have friends that are friendly enough and concerned enough to talk to us when we're wrong and come to us when we need to be restored. We lost a couple recently before this pandemic because they were not of the custom of people visiting their house, and they got deeply offended that we knocked on their door. Well, I don't know any other way to start a church, and I don't know any other way to go after people that leave the church than to go and talk to them about the Lord, amen, and about the Word. And it was just amazing to me. But folks, listen, we need godly advice. We need godly counsel. That's a better word. And folks, we need to realize that when you talk to someone, you best find somebody that's sharp spiritually if they're going to sharpen your sword. Say amen. Sometimes we look for an excuse in our counsel. Well, I'll find the worst Christian I can uh, to find out how good I am. But folks, we need to find somebody more spiritual. That's why you ought to marry somebody spiritual. You uh, dating girls and boys. You should never date, well, I know I'm looking for somebody saved. No, it ought to be much more than saved. They ought to be spiritual, more spiritual than you because you need a spiritual leader. But let me just sum up uh, this fact is that when I started this church, I was confused. I still am, but I was really confused because Georgia is a big place. United States is a big place. And if I'd have got around Austin Gardner, I'd have been a missionary, I promise you that. I mean, I was just willing to go anywhere. And Brother Paul gave me one day off every Thursday to go survey communities, and I went and started surveying communities. And finally, I went all over South Georgia. I didn't feel led to go anywhere in South Georgia. And I remember I finally said, well, what am I supposed to do? And he said, go seek godly counsel. And so I went to the godliest preacher that I knew, who turned out not to be so godly, with the fastest growing church in Marietta, Georgia, 1700, all good drive. Bob Moore, the fastest growing Sunday school in Georgia. Now he's not even in the ministry. And uh, he fell into sin. And it's terrible. But I remember I walked in there and I said, Brother Bob, I need some advice. I want to start a church and I don't know where to go. I have no clue. And he said this to me. He said, if I was going to start a church in North Georgia, and I know North Georgia, I said, you're a South Georgia boy, you don't know nothing about North Georgia. I said, well, just tell me. He said, I'd either go to Gainesville or Dalton. I did ne I've never been to Dalton in my life, and Gainesville sounded pretty good. And I went to Gainesville um, on Thanksgiving Day, and it was dead as a doornail. The only thing that was moving over there was chickens. And you could smell them, Amen. I still love chickens. I don't care how they smell, amen, in those, in those houses and plants. And uh, it was the chicken capital of the world, praise God. And surely a Baptist preacher should have been fit, 
led to that town, but I wasn't. And I came the day after Thanksgiving, 1977. J.C. Penney's was at Bryman's Plaza. It was the day after Thanksgiving. And I remember Connie and I, we began to survey this town and go door to door and house to house and street to street saying, is this the place? Is this the place? And I went back to J.C. Penney's and the place was packed. I had not, I didn't have enough sense to realize the day after Thanksgiving, any store in any place is going to be packed. Black Friday, amen. And I remember God speaking to our hearts as we drove up on that mountain. And we looked down on these lights. See, Brother Austin got that idea from me. It wasn't, he, I, want you to, I want you to know that. And I remember we prayed over the city. And Connie's weeping and trembling, knowing that she's going to have to pack up everything she has in a cattle truck and move up to Dalton, Georgia, or Gainesville, Georgia. And I know what she's praying. Oh, God, lead him. And I want to tell you something, friend. God gave me peace that night that this was the place 43 years ago. And folks, God used Bob Moore. God uses people. You better find some godly counsel. So let me just put it all together. F.B. F. Meyer said this, when the word of God and the impulse of the Holy Spirit in the heart and the outward circumstances are in harmony then I'm convinced that I'm acting in accordance with the will of God. Did you hear that? The Word of God, the Holy Spirit, outward circumstances, including godly advice, is all together. You can be sure that you're walking and moving in accordance to the Word of God. The Bible says, Thy Word is truth. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. In Psalms 37, our delight should melt into his delight. And folks, we're not trying to twist an unwilling God. We're trying to get a hold of a willing God and his willingness and his will. And I want to say this, the greatest adventure in this world and the greatest privilege in this world and the greatest uh, life that you could ever live in this world is in the perfect will of God. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Wisdom is seeing the world through God's eyes. That's a pretty good definition. Wisdom. And I want to preach just a few minutes on how to get wisdom. How to be wise. There's six character qualities if you want wisdom. Wisdom is choosing the things that will count for eternity. That makes sense, don't it? I mean, folks, only what's done for Christ will last. So you might as well do what God wants you to do and be what God wants you to be first, and that's wisdom. Now, I won't get past point one tonight. This is going to be a long series. But you know something? I'm not dreading it. I'm looking forward to it. Next Sunday morning, I get to preach on day by day. been looking forward to that for a long time. But first of all, there needs to be reverence. You're going to have wisdom. I'm talking about a character quality about you, that you revere God. And it's better known as the fear of God. The fear of God is knowing that God knows. It's an awesome dread of displeasing God. That's the fear of God. Folks, I want to tell you something. If you just fear daddy when daddy's not around and you're out of town, you're going to mess up. If you just fear mama, when mama's out of town or you're out of town, you're going to mess up because that's the fear of man. If I showed a video next Friday of Brother Randy Team's life, this is your life, brother, and we're going to do it. And we're going to put you on the screen, and we're going to follow you around with the church camera. Brother, uh, brother Cody said he'd do it. And I'm going to tell you something. If he went to work with him in Rome and he went down to good old Nicholsville where he lives. Isn't he faithful? Praise God. I, mean, I don't know how he makes it across that railroad track in Resaca on time. Praise the Lord. If that thing ever blocks you, you're going to miss four services. And, 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 and I guarantee you that this week, that week that we were videoing Brother Randy team would be really different. I mean, he'd praise God for everything. He'd be smiling and shouting. He'd be singing all day long. And I want to tell you something, we'd put him on the screen on Sunday night and boy, he'd be smiling because he put it on, buddy. 
And I mean, he really, he really had a great week. That's the fear of man. That's the fear of man. Because see, he'd be afraid of what you thought of him. The fear of man is doing things for man, doing things for reputation, doing things to look good. But I'm going to tell you something, the fear of God is knowing that God knows. Knowing that God knows. Genuine fear of the Lord always ends in obedience to the Word of God. I want you to turn in your Bible to some verses tonight to show you the evidence and the fruit of the fear of God. And I want to say this with all my heart, is that if we could just get back to fearing God, the will of God would take care of itself. Because folks, you're recognizing His presence. As I said, the will of God's not a road map, the will of God is a relationship. Walk with God. That will be the desire of your heart. The remarkable thing about fearing God, Oswald Chambers says, is that when you fear God, you fear nothing else. Whereas if you do not fear God, the fear, you fear everything else. I've, I believe the safest place for you to ever be, Brother Josh and Miss Megan, is in the perfect will of God. I know that your parents worry about you. And I know that your grandparents really would like to have those kids say amen, Mark and Julie and Bernella at home on the way of internet. You would love to have those grandchildren always there with you. You would love to see their ball games. You would love to have their birthday parties. Miss Ewan just recently couldn't come home for her own mother's funeral from Indonesia. Wasn't possible. Folks, it's not what mama wants or daddy wants or what you want, but I want to tell you something. It's the most fulfilling life in the world. Don't feel sorry for these missionaries. If they're in the will of God, they're, they're, they're having the ultimate life experience. But if you miss the will of God and if you're out of the will of God and you don't live in the presence of God and you don't fear God, I'm telling you sin will bring you down to perversion uh, sin will shorten your life. Sin will ruin other people's lives and there'll be a curse upon your life. Even as a Christian, out of the will of God, you're miserable. Matter of fact, the most miserable people in this room are people out of the will of God. More miserable than lost people because lost people don't know them no better. But we Christians know better. Say so amen. And so there ought to be reverence, there ought to be humility, there ought to be teachability, there ought to be diligence, uprightness, faith. Winning the loss will give you wisdom. And praise God, glorifying the only wise God will give you wisdom. But I want to park just for a few minutes, about 15 minutes or so, on the dividends of the fear of God. And I'm going to tell you straight from the book of Proverbs, I love Proverbs, don't you? There's 31 of them, you ought to read one every day of the, of the month. But I want you to see, folks, that Chapter 1, verse 7 says it's the beginning of wisdom. Chapter 9, verse 10 says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Chapter 15, verse 33 says the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And before honor is humility. The best place to begin to search for wisdom is the fear of God. True fear of the Lord is born out of a knowledge of the infinite power and majesty and goodness of God. Paul had two questions when he got saved. Number one, who are you? And number two, what do you want me to do? I believe that ought to be the two greatest questions in our life is, Lord, who are you? And folks, if you get to know God, you'll respect God. And to the degree that you know God, you'll love God. And to the degree that you love God, you'll obey God. And all that summed up is abiding in him. And when you're a branch abiding in him, you're a happy branch. Say amen. I mean, you're a fruitful branch. One of the fruits of the Spirit's joy, by the way. We're not producing plastic fruit. These are fruits that remain, fruit of holiness, fruit of good works, the fruit of another Christian, the fruit of another church, the fruit of Christians growing up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Folks, listen, let me just give you real quick. Number two, fear motivates people to holiness. Not only is it an avenue to uh, wisdom, but number two, and it's not on the board, so just write her down is that it's, it, it motivates people to holiness. Look at Proverbs chapter 3, verse 7. I invite you to do this. <clears throat> I have an old Schofield Bible because I 
have to, I can't change Bibles. I was talking to Brother Gabe about that. I was interested in his Bible where it has the definitions of the King James words, and that's good. But I, I can't change, Brother Steve. I've used the old school field Bible since I started preaching 50 years ago, and I know that 2 Timothy 4, 7, 8 is right here on the right-hand side down here, just right here, amen? And if I change Bibles, I can't find nothing. I can find the book, but I can't find the verse, so I'm stuck with it. But I found this Bible uh, a few uh, years ago, and I've been through two of them, and it's a, it's a Schofield Bible without notes. And so all I got is blank in between it. So what I do, I put my own notes down. I erase the S on the Bible. Now it's a Schofield Bible. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I wish I could sell it. No, not really. I don't need to sell it. I don't need no money. But I'll say this, friend, listen. I got in my Bible with no notes, no Schofield notes, which some of his notes are not too good especially the gap theory. Don't believe a word of it. But um, I want you to notice, uh, I put an F next to these words called fear God, and it's all through Proverbs. I put W by everyone that talks about communication, and my Bible's full of Ws. But I want you to see chapter 3, verse 7. If you want to put an F by it or fear God or if you want to circle it or if you want to put fingernail polish under it, I don't care what you do, but look at this. Chapter 3, verse 7. It says, be not wise in your own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. Amen. I want to tell you something. I'm a separated, independent Baptist preacher, and I'm glad I'm independent Baptist by conviction, and that's why we can have missionaries like this come by and encourage us, and they can be held accountable, and you won't find that in Lottie Moon or Annie Armstrong. I ain't going there, but I'm just saying, folks, if you walk with God and you walk in the light as he's in the light, you have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus cleanses from all sin. And if you say that you are not a sinner, you make God a liar. But thank God it goes on down to verse 9, and 1 John says that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanses of all unrighteousness. See, folks, you've got to walk in the light to even realize it's sin. And the closer you walk to God, the heavier sin will be. Amen? And I want to tell you something, friend. We're getting used to the darkness around here. This, this nation is trying to get us to compromise in our beliefs, in our core beliefs. And folks, listen, we need to walk with God and we need to be separated. But not just separated. Mormons are separated. I found out this week Catholics are separated, Brother Mark. Say amen right there. They don't believe in abortion. They don't. They're upset with their president. They're supposed to be the second Catholic that's ever run, I don't know. Don't get me started on that again. I ain't gonna never get the Democrats to come back. But I want you to know, friend, listen. God help us to realize we're not Catholics and we're not Mormons. We're independent Baptists separated because we're separated unto God. We love God. We wanna love God more than sin. We love God so we don't love the world. That's your motive, amen. The fear of God is practicing his presence and departing from evil. Let me give you another one. Proverbs 16, 6. I just love the book of Proverbs. Y'all are in trouble. I might preach at 9 o'clock. Y'all already be at gondoliers eating pizza and saying, hope he's still preaching. But look at chapter 16, verse 6. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. What a motive. Walk in the light and sin will be dark. I don't guess we can use the word black anymore. It's dark. <laughs> use it if I want to. A little wordless book, you know. Amen. They're going to try to outlaw that, I guess. God help us. God help us. Hope they don't touch the braids. Amen. God help us. Washington football team. Isn't that ridiculous? I think Redskins sound good. Say so amen. Don't get me started on this, Brother Randy. I told you not to get me started. And so we've, it, the verse tells us the fear of the Lord promotes holy living because you're walking with he that's holy. Say so amen. I want to tell you something, friend. If you reverence and respect the Lord, you ought to realize that anything you do that's not Godly disgraces him, dishonors him, pains his heart. 
people who genuinely fear the Lord, flee from evil. The prospect of causing the Lord pain should bear upon your heart. I say this often when I'm teaching the couples retreat, and we got two on the waiting list, but we'll make room for y'all if you want to go. We're going to have to rent another place, though. But I often say this, the greatest way to discipline your children is to get a fellowship and a relationship with them. And then when they, when they disobey you, and they get rebellious, that the greatest punishment is when they grieve daddy and mama. Come on now. You have such a relationship of love that they can see on your face grief. And don't you think the Holy Spirit's grieved when corrupt communication, verse 28, 29 of Ephesians 4, bitterness, verse 31, and lack of forgiveness, verse 32 of Ephesians 4, grieves the Spirit of God. Nothing grieves me more than when my children disagree or fault. I thought Stephen and Stephanie coming out of the same womb at the same time, praise God, they would love each other to death, do them part. But sometimes I thought they was going to kill each other because <laughs> one of them was acting like their daddy. They're both acting like their mama. they have been a little civil. Boy, it grieved me, Brother Steve. I said, man, why are they fighting? They're, they're brother and sister. And I ain't, heard, I ain't met a brother and sister that don't fight a little bit, say amen, praise God, especially if they sleep in the same room like they had to do at our house. <laughs> Woo, God help us. We got through it. Fear of the Lord will produce life, and warmth, and love, but most of all to please Him. Let me hurry. I'll just give you another one. Number three, the fear of the Lord prolongs life. Go to Proverbs 10, verse 27. Proverbs 10, verse 27. You put those little Fs next to it? You don't have to. You can put your initials by it. I don't care. You can circle it. Praise God. I got, I got a, a bookstore up in Pigeon Ford. It's near Maryville. They have these great underliners. They're wax, man. You can just... You can just mark your Bible. It's so wonderful. Brilliant yellow. Maybe you want to put brilliant yellow over this verse. Look at it. It says, The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Oh, I have preached funerals of young men and young ladies that shortened their life. I mean, they were in open, obvious, blatant, rebellious sin. God had to take them home because they were shaming his name. Folks, I want to tell you something. Sin will short-circuit everything that's good, including your life. You that used to live and delve into sin, it's the grace of God you're alive today. I was talking to you, Brother Lamar. It's just a blessing that God spared us to live another day when we were so crazy in our youth. Remember what y'all used to do? I don't want no volunteers to give no testimonies. I mean, I don't want to hear the dirty laundry, but remember Brother Gabe? It's the grace of God you're sitting there with a nice family. And folks, we need to realize the fear of God. The fear of God turns us from sin, turns us to the Lord. The fear of God motivates holiness in our life. We depart from evil. Number three, the, the fear of God prolongs our days. Let me just say this. You're immortal in the will of God until God's finished with you. But if you're out of the will of God, there is a sin unto death. Amen. For whom the Lord loveth, he scourged and chased, and every son he receiveth. And first he takes the peace of God away from you, and then he, he takes you to the woodshed, and then if you don't learn your lesson, he'll say, okay, come on home. You're shaming my name. He don't send you to hell. You can't lose your salvation, but I tell you what, you can lose your privilege of living on this earth. I say that with a broken heart. I can't go into detail, but I've seen it. I've sensed it. 
There's no peace at the funeral. When a child shortens his life. And then number four, if I got time for one more, amen. I might take two with that. I got two amens. I'm going to take two. Blame it on blame. blame. Blame it on blame. Blame it on blame. That's a mouthful. It produces a sense of security, number four. A sense of security. Number one, it, motiv- it, 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 uh, it, it, it motivates holiness. It prolongs life. But it produces a sense of security. I want you to turn to Proverbs 14, verse 26. Don't you love the book of wisdom? Say amen. I love it. It's just a wonderful book. You ought to read a proverb every day. Tomorrow, February 1st, you ought to take off on the first proverb. Say amen. Can you believe we've already got one month gone in 2021? This world's flying by, isn't it? Amen. I made a prediction COVID would be completely gone at the end of January. Glad I'm not running for office. (laughs) Amen. Oh, my word. Look at this, 1426. We must have not learned our lesson yet. The Bible says, In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. and His children shall have a place of refuge. Hallelujah. I want to tell you something, friend. You ought to thank God for your daddy and mama that fear the Lord. You had a God-fearing mama, Brother Darrell. She put the fear of God in me sometimes for some things she said. <laughs> I forget that time I told a mother-in-law joke and she let me have it at the door. I didn't tell that joke for about four months. <laughs> I waited she didn't show up and I told it again. But anyway, it produces a sense of security. In the fear of the Lord, there's a strong refuge. You ought to thank God your mama and daddy drug you to church tonight. You ought to thank God that you can be in church every time the doors open and say amen. You ought to thank God that they want you in Sunday school. You ought to thank God they got a home school and teaching Christian principles, and you don't have to put up with all the junk other kids put up with. You ought to thank God. Don't, don't, don't bow your head and apologize for godly parents. Praise them. Bless them. Thank God for them. We're walking in the fear of the Lord. We got confidence that God is on our side. Say amen. If God be for us, who can be against us? Romans 8, 31. I believe that we have a sense of security that when we walk with God, we're saved. You want to talk about um, eternal life and eternal security? Well, if you'll live like a Christian, you'll have eternal security. You'll have security. You'll really know you're saved if you talk to him today. You'll really know you're saved if you'll listen to his word today. And I'm telling you, friend, it's not based on works, but praise God, we have a faith that is secure. We have a faith that has some security. But I want you to notice the next verse, number five or six or whatever. It produces life. Here it is. But verse 27, chapter 14. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. It's a fountain of life. Fear of the Lord is like a fountain that continually springs up and gives us vitality and strength. Folks, in his presence is fullness of joy, but his pleasures forevermore, 1611, Psalms. Christians who walk a cleaner and closer life avoid temptation that traps them by the devil. Next week I'll be preaching on the first day by day, and that's uh, when Joseph was victorious over the Potiphar's wife's attack continuously. It says day by day she attacked him. That's the way the devil tries. But folks, I want to say this. I want to say it with all my heart. Is The greatest way to overcome temptation is practice his presence. What would Jesus do? And Jesus is going in that place with you. There is no dark corner that God's not with you. There's no out, out, out of town motel that God's not there. Folks, the fear of the Lord will set you free to live for his glory and his honor. And If you don't watch it, you'll mess up and ruin your life through one night of sin. I got two more I want to give you, and I'll close. 
Look at Proverbs 15, 16. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasures and trouble therein. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a stalled ox and hatred therewith. Folks, the Bible says better is a little with the fear of the Lord. This verse teaches us that it's better to have limited resources and to be in the will of God and to have things that money cannot buy. I rehearsed this this morning in Matthew 6, 25 through 33, Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. He'll supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. He's not obligated to supply your greeds, but your needs. And folks, what you need is peace and love and joy and security, and trust, and love that money cannot buy. Life is just better in the will and the fear of God. Life of faith and the fear of God sets you free. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom, there's liberty. And then look at Proverbs 19, verse 23. He said, all this is is a Bible study. Well, what else are we going to study? <laughs> what is better than this? Say amen. My little illustrations and jokes? No. It's the Word of God set you free. Bless your heart. Change your life. It's a sharp two-edged sword. It does surgery. Here it is, 1923. You with me? Say amen. It says, the fear of the Lord tendeth to life. He that hath it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. Oh, my goodness. Pleasing the Lord. And learning to be satisfied with God. And living for the applause of heaven instead of the applause of this earth will set you free. The smile of God should be what you live for. To please God is what you ought to live for. And there's no way to please God except by fearing Him, reverencing Him, acknowledging Him, loving and adoring Him, walking with Him. What a blessing. You got time for one more. This is one of my favorite. Proverbs 22, verse 4. Is before Proverbs 22, verse 6. Now, y'all came all the way here to hear that, that deep knowledge. Four is before six. And we always like to go down to six. Tramp a child the way he should go, and when he's old, he'll not depart from it. That's true. It's the truth. But look at verse 4. It says, By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor, and life. And folks, I want to tell you this. The person who chooses to walk in the fear of the Lord can rest that this decision will bring great blessings beyond the things of this world. Peace, joy, hope, security, the presence of God, the honor, the respect, the abundant life, John 10.10. 10. Fear of the Lord produced the greatest possible life that any person could ever live. It's called the will of God. There's no better life on this earth than being in the perfect will of God, practicing the presence of God, walking in the fear of God. And His riches, and His honor, and His life. I can't think of anything else better. Try it at home. Respect and honor will energize your mate in 60 seconds. Respect and honor from children to parents will put a smile on their face more than a raise on the job. Say amen. I'm saying, folks, the Bible says it, and it's very clearly 1 Peter 3, 7, we ought to honor the weaker vessel. And in the middle of that verse, it says that you can be heirs together of the grace of life. Folks, I'm telling you, honor will free your marriage. And 
Honor will heighten. You listen to me, Brother Petty. Uh, honor and respect. Don't ever lose it. Don't ever take each other for granted. Don't just get business as usual. I'm now married. But you smile when she comes in the room, not when she leaves it. Amen. Come on now. Practice it. It's good. Just When she come, walks in, just start smiling. No matter what she's doing, what she wants done, just smile and agree with her, and y'all live happily ever after. I'm giving them marriage counsel right now. They get married next Saturday. I got to do something. A little late, late now. If it'll work in your children's relationship with your parents, and your parent and your your husband and wife, this respect thing. What do you think it's going to do in your life if you just honor God? Father, use this message. God, thank you for the fear of the Lord. It's revolutionizing. It's cha- it changes everything. But it puts us right dab in the middle, of, right slap dab in the middle of your perfect will. And what a life. What a privilege. What a ministry. What an honor. To know and to live and enjoy the will of God. And Lord, it's not just for us. We'll never train up a child the way he should go until we fear you and have riches and honor in life that gives authority to our training, that gives validity to our training, that gives us the platform for our training, a wonderful home, a beautiful marriage, a life lived in the fear of God. Lord, we respect you. And we're so sorry that some people don't. And Lord, I pray that you'd have mercy upon America that has shook their fist at you in a blatant way and said we're going to redefine marriage. And we're going to redefine gender. And we're going to redefine life that begins at conception. God, please forgive us. Please have mercy. God, I'm praying for a God-fearing nation again. And I'm praying for a God-fearing church. And God, I'm praying for a God-fearing family. But most of all, and probably the only thing I can do, I'm praying for a God-fearing heart. Walking in the love and light of your love. Your word, God, please, God, please accept our submission to your authority. We honor you as the Lord God Almighty. We honor you as our Savior that came from heaven to redeem our unworthy soul. And we love you. We appreciate you. God, check us any time we don't appreciate you like we should. With every head bowed, every eye closed, just a quick word of invitation. How many want to fear God more? Want to honor God more? You want to be in the will of God? And folks, I didn't get past point one. You want to be, you want to be wise. It starts with reverence. It starts with, who are you, Lord? And know God. Know God. Not intellectually, I mean know God intimately. And you'll never do that unless you get in the Word every day. Unless you pray every day. Unless you listen to the right kind of music. You'll never know God like you should. If you're in the right kind of church, you got to stay in this church, folks. Hey, when I die and pass on, you ought to just keep on going for God. But you'd say, preacher, tonight, I just want to fear God and respect God more for who He is. And I want to be in the will of God for my life. And that's your prayer tonight. Anybody want to raise your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me. I need that help. God bless you. God bless you. All of us. I say it every time, but this is not just about us. How many know somebody that don't fear God? You know somebody that's just really living their own life 
for their own self, defining their life like they want it, making their choices without consulting the Almighty God. Isn't that an insult? They won't even pray about it. And they're backslidden to the core. And you'd say, preacher, pray for them. Would you slip your hand up on their behalf? That's what we're here for, to intercede for others. Amen. Intercession all over this place. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you. Thank you for the will of God. Thank you, dear God, that we can be wise to know and live and enjoy the will of God through reverence and fear. God, thank you for these verses in Proverbs that teach us the benefits, the dividends, the blessings of fearing God. May we meditate on them. May we, Lord, prayerize them and actualize them and submit to them. Lord, may we live the life that's pleasing to Thee in the fear of God. Lord, all because we love You. In Jesus' name.